Afternoon everybody and um, welcome back to Birmingham Wildlife Conservation Park for the latest in our Wednesday Facebook Live videos. Uh, we're continuing our world tour today. Uh, we are heading to Morocco to meet our northern bald ibis, uh, who we can see in the shot here. Um, as ever, please feel free to send in any comments or questions you might have, uh, otherwise I will just try to tell you a little bit about northern bald ibis. Um, but yeah, other than that, we will crack on. So in this aviary here, we have one northern bald ibis, and then we do have three sacred ibis as well. Um, so the sacred ibis are just there, as you can see. But the northern bald ibis is this one here. So um, they're a predominantly blackbird uh, with this bald head, which is obviously where they get their name, um, which is a bit of a reddy pink color, and this um, kind of reddy colored bill uh, as well. Um, usual characteristics of the majority of the ibis species, quite a long curved bill. Um, and the same kind of body shape and, and form and things like that. Um, unlike the majority of other ibis species, they are actually not um, really a wading bird. Um, ibis species in general um, are found in kind of wetland habitats normally. These guys are not. They're a bit of an exception to that rule. I'm just going to try and get a little bit closer. Every time I do, I'm trying to try to flap off. better. Um, so the individual we've got here is around about 20 years old. Um, not sure on the exact date just because the records from when uh, this guy hatched um, at his hatch location weren't particularly brilliant. Um, and we're not actually sure what um, kind of gender this uh, or sex this um, this ibis is. Um, yeah, we're not 100% sure. Um, but yeah, around about 20 years old. Captive lifespan is on average about 20 to 25. Um, see them up there. Um, yeah, captive average lifespan is around 20 to 25. Um, so, so this guy is getting a little bit old now. Um, he's getting a little bit, a little bit old now. Um, but it seems to be doing okay. Um, hi Mary, hope you're okay. Hope you're doing okay today. I'm just trying to get a bit of a better view again. Very flapped off over there. So, um, northern bald ibis are found uh, in not many places at the moment to be honest um they've got a stronghold in morocco um there at least was a little um population in syria um but at the moment that's kind of unknown um if that's still um present um and then there are some reintroduction efforts going on um turkey have got quite a good program going there's um, some reintroductions going on in spain um i think austria as well um so so yeah they've um they did really struggle in the wild they were critically endangered up until around about five years ago i think uh to which they were downgraded mainly due to those reintroduction programs that i was just talking about um as well as uh the moroccan population growing in size naturally um that brought these guys down to endangered so they're doing okay at the moment which is which is good they're kind of going in the right direction which is what we like Hi Tim, hope you're okay today. Um, yeah, like I say, um, reintroduction programs are happening. Um, these guys are a migratory species. Um, and some of these reintroduction programs are kind of semi-wild reintroduction. So the, the birds are allowed to be uh, free roaming and things over the summer. And then in the winter, they return to kind of a, a, um, a caged uh, enclosure, uh, a caged area to stop them from migrating um, until they're able to be kind of taught migration routes. So, so yeah, um, a lot of good work really going on with these guys out in the out in the wild and with reintroduction programs and things. So, so yeah, um, a positive story. Um, numbers aren't great in the wild, um, but they're a lot better than <laughs> a lot better than they than they were. Um, so yeah. 
things are on the up with these guys, which is which is the main thing at the moment. So this is our northern bald ibis, Tim. We've got two ibis species here, uh, northern bald here, and then the African sacreds who are all up the other end at the moment. Yeah, the, the weather's lovely today, Karen. Um, yeah, he's enjoying a bit of sunshine up there. Yeah, we can't really be in the enclosure with these guys, um, even though kind of avian flu protocols um, have been relaxed. We're kind of keeping our biosecurity um, high, uh, so I'm not going in there without a, a, a suit on or anything like that. So, um, so yeah, we are just going to watch from outdoors today. So the diet of these guys um, is mainly animal-based. Um, they feed on uh, mainly a range of lizards and um, other kind of small vertebrate prey. Um, they will eat invertebrates as well. Um, but yeah, the majority of the diet is, is those kinds of things. Um, here at the park, we feed a mixture of meat um, and fish. Uh, that's mainly, uh, obviously these guys share a diet with the African sacred ibis. So that kind of covers both bases with, with these guys and the sacreds. Um, and there's also some kind of pellets in there as well for them. Um, and that pretty much keeps them going. We do try to offer them live food as well. Um, kind of invertebrate prey, uh, morio worms, meal worms, that kind of thing as well. So, so yeah, they do have a nice little varied diet, which is good. So Tim, um, we don't. We, we've only got the one northern bald ibis. Um, uh, a couple of years ago, we lost our the, the pair of this this individual. Um, so obviously, no breeding going on at the moment. Um, like I say, this guy's a a fairly old individual now. He's probably coming towards the end of his natural lifespan. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll probably leave him be, and then when when he he eventually goes, we'll see what see what happens next. Um, but no, these, these guys, even when we had the pair, they weren't really, um, top of the list for the breeding program. Um, so, so yeah, um, they were kind of used more as the ambassador animals, um, to kind of teach and, and educate rather than, um, rather than for breeding purposes. Uh, normally when a clutch, well, it's not, well, no, it is a clutch of eggs. Um, normally... Two or three. Um, uh, gestation period, uh, well, incubation period, I should say, is um, I think it's around about sixty days. Um, and then you get a kind of little brown chick that doesn't look too much like the adult, um, which kind of starts um, flapping about after a couple of weeks, and then yeah, it kind of fully fledges after a couple of months. So. Um, so yeah, they do produce, um, produce the eggs quite pretty as well though, um, kind of speckled, very nice, very nice looking eggs that these guys have got. So as I was saying earlier, these guys, um, are unlike the majority of the rest of the ibis family, uh, they're not really found in wetlands or, or things like that. They're found more on kind of rocky outcrops, um, and deserty habitats as you would kind of guess coming from Morocco, Syria, Turkey, etc., etc. Um, even in kind of central Europe where they used to be, uh, used to be widespread, whereas now they, they are not. Um, they'd be more, uh, they, they used to be found in kind of castle battlements and, and on mountains and things like that. It's, it's really a rocky habitat for them rather than, rather than the wetland one. Yes, Tim, these guys are, they've got a good population in Morocco. Um, and that kind of northwestern region of, of Africa. Um, other than that, there's, there's not too, too much going on, um, in Africa. The, the other kind of main strongholds for these guys at the moment are, are Syria, Turkey, Spain. Um, so yeah, they do have quite a large range. Um, but yes, um, not, not tons in Africa. The biggest population is in Africa, uh, in Morocco. Um, but... But yeah, they're not too widespread within Africa itself. They used to be found, you know, throughout most of Northern Africa. Um, these guys, along with the sacred ibis, um, were uh, honoured by, you know, the Egyptians, the ancient Egyptians. Um, 
so so they yeah, they used to be fairly prevalent in Egypt and and that kind of region there um but but no more unfortunately um but we'll see with the reintroductions they might start spreading again themselves although we might end up getting some reintroduction programs in some of the other countries in North Africa so so we will see see what happens with with that so they are classed as endangered Tim um up until about five years ago they were actually classed as critically endangered um but they have been downgraded um due to the reintroduction efforts and the natural growth of the Moroccan population um so yeah they are going in the right direction which is which is great um yeah really good really good to see Yeah, like I say, this guy is getting on a little bit now. Um, average lifespan is 20 to 25. Um, although the oldest individual uh, in captivity, I think, lived to 37. So so we will see. Um, could still have a good 15 or so years left in, in this ibis here. Um, but yeah, we'll wait and see what, see what happens. Doing okay at the moment, which is the main thing. Well then guys, um, feel free to send in any last minute questions, otherwise we will wrap it up there. I'm not sure if there is a reason for the beak being coloured. Um, they don't really use it for display or, or courtship or anything like that as far as I know. Um, I don't know if that's just kind of a natural coloration that, you know, that, that's come about. Um, yeah, I don't really know. Um, obviously, when you compare that to the sacred ibis, who have got the black heads and the black beaks, um, it is a very different look. Um, but but no, I'm not sure if there is an actual reason for for that coloration. Next week uh, for the video, we'll be staying in Africa, probably around the Saharan region. I'm not sure. Um, not sure who is actually next on the list. Might be something like the Uromastics in the Reptile House, but I will check and we will have a look um, at that for next week. And we will advertise that on Tuesday as ever. Right then, guys, I think we will call it a day there. Um, so, yes, thank you for tuning in as ever. And, yeah, we'll be back again uh, same time next week. Cheers, guys. Take care.